Good morning, it's Tuesday, February 8th, and we're bringing you the latest news, making headlines to help you start your day. An Atlanta police officer is in the hospital and a known gang member is in jail after an arrest operation ends in gunfire. Our Tori Cooper is outside Grady Hospital with the latest. Tori. Good morning, Robin Gervier. Police just got back to us and they tell us that the officer, they did not release his name, but they tell us he is in stable but serious condition here at Grady Hospital this morning. And they also just released the name of the suspect who they say shot the police officer. They say 22 year old Christian Eppinger is the man who is now accused of shooting the police officer yesterday. Let's roll some video from the scene yesterday where police say they learned that Eppinger, who is a known gang member, was apparently in the area of Cleveland Avenue and Hapeville Road in southwest Atlanta around 1.15 p.m. at an apartment complex. They say they were trying to arrest him and that he started fighting with police and then began firing gunshots at them. Eventually, he was arrested a short time later. They also say that he has a violent past. They say that back in October of last year, he was charged for allegedly holding a victim at gunpoint, stealing their keys, jewelry, and car from them. And they say this is exactly the type of people they're working to get off the streets right now. We are going after individuals who are robbing citizens of this city, that are shooting citizens of this city, and murdering in this city. Now, Eppinger is expected to appear in court for his first court appearance today. And I do just have a list of some of the charges that he is going to be facing. He's facing armed robbery, aggravated assault, attempted murder, aggravated battery against a law enforcement officer, along with many other charges. Stick around with us at 9 a.m. because we're going to head over there and see what else we can gather. We're also already submitting paperwork so that we can be in the courtroom. Reporting live in downtown Atlanta, I'm Tori Cooper, CBS 46 News. Yeah, I don't think a day goes by that we're not reporting on some crime in the city of Atlanta, and that's been a big issue. Uh, Tori, thank you so much. And the city council now addressing those concerns. Some say the city's crime is out of control. Yeah, we've heard that a lot over the last year or so. Yes. Trayson Bragg joins us live from City Hall with the details this morning. Trayson. That's right, Rob Gavir, you can call it a worry, a concern, a fear. It's what is on everybody's mind right now, and that is crime, as you just said. And as you said as well, the city of Atlanta now is uh, upgrading a tool that they have to help fight crime. And I'll tell you, frustration is building all over the city because crime seems to be hitting every inch of the city. You can add Virginia Highland to that list. Recently, dozens of cars were broken into on the same night. Well, neighbors are experiencing some deja vu because this time, five cars smashed into on the same street. New data shows that 95% of all crime in the Virginia Highland neighborhood is to personal property. And let's just say local frustration is now hitting boiling point. The string of crime is just one reason why Atlanta City Council member Keisha Waits sponsored a bill that passed unanimously yesterday that will beef up its public safety commission, adding appointed businesses and neighborhood voices to that commission. You cannot be in Atlanta and not have seen the recent shootings at nightclubs and strip clubs in the city of Atlanta. It is my belief that this is one step forward to addressing some of the bad apples out there. Now, Wade says she wants to get those community members added to the commission ASAP, and her goal is to hold the first meeting within the next 30 days. If you're interested in joining the commission, you can do so by reaching out to your local council member. Reporting from City Hall, I'm Tracy Bragg, CBS 46 News. Trayson, thanks for that report. It's 636, and right now we're keeping an eye on today with the other stories you need to know. A Minneapolis police officer who oversaw medical training for two of the three former officers who were charged with violating George Floyd's civil rights will take the stand again today. Officer Nicole McKenzie testified that two of the defendants were in a police academy emergency medical responder class that she taught, which covered first aid and ethics in care. All three former officers are accused of depriving George Floyd of his rights when they failed to give him medical aid when Officer Derek Chauvin knelt on his neck. President Biden says the future of a major gas line in Europe would be in doubt if Russia invades Ukraine. The Nord Stream 2 was finished last year but is yet to be turned on. Russia is Europe's biggest gas supplier and the pipeline would make transportation easier. President Biden says he will shut it down if Russian troops cross the Ukrainian border. President Biden's science advisor is stepping down after admitting he demeaned and disrespected his colleagues. It comes after an internal investigation found Dr. Eric Lander violated policies for a respectful workplace.
The IRS is scrapping the idea of face recognition technology. The agency wanted taxpayers to use it when they created online accounts at irs.gov. Users would have to upload their ID and submit a selfie, but the idea faced backlash from privacy advocates and lawmakers. They were concerned that hackers could steal personal information. Dolly Parton's getting some help with hosting duties at the Academy of Country Music Awards. Reigning ACM, new male and new female artists of the year, Jimmy Allen and Gabby Barrett will join Parton at the podium when the awards are handed out March 7th. Welcome back. It's now four, uh, rather 644. And this morning, Fulton County's district attorney is pushing back against claims that she's not going to be able to prosecute former President Trump for crimes he allegedly committed while he was in the Oval Office. Our Rebecca Schramm is live in downtown Atlanta this morning. Rebecca, the DA insists Trump will have to answer to any charges. She is uh, Robin Gravier. Good morning to you. You know, she's already gotten approval for a special grand jury to investigate, and she expects that subpoenas could start coming out in early May. Fulton County District Attorney Fani Willis has been investigating whether former President Trump or his allies committed any crimes when they tried to convince Georgia officials to find fraud after the 2020 election and declare him the winner here in Georgia. The allegations stem from a recorded phone call Mr. Trump made to Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger in which he pressed him to find votes, insisting he won the state. In a in a sit-down interview with CNN, Willis said she's digging into not only Trump's actions, but also others in his inner circle. I imagine that we're going to be issuing subpoenas to a lot of people and that all of them are not going to welcome our invitation to come speak with us. And some of those people who might be subpoenaed, Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani, former chief of staff Mark Meadows, and South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham will be watching as the case unfolds and we'll bring you updates as they come in. Live in Atlanta, Rebecca Schramm, CBS 46 News. Metro Atlanta's newest marketplace that caters to black and minority owned small businesses is hosting multiple Black History Month events. It all starts tomorrow at the new Black Wall Street in Stonecrest. The market will host an art fest and culture festival through Sunday, February 27th. The market is named after the business district in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was the site of a racist massacre a century ago. It's 646 right now. Amazon is more than doubling the maximum pay for its corporate and technology workers in the U.S. Salaries have been capped at $160,000 a year. The new maximum, $350,000 a year. In a blog post to employees, Amazon cites the tight labor market and it says the company needs to remain competitive in attracting and holding on to top talent. Trending this morning, Olympic athletes are slamming quarantine conditions in Beijing. Yeah, once you see these pictures, you might understand. Our yeah. Brooks Baptiste joins us with the stories topping your social media feeds this morning. Brooks, not great, man. <laughs> Look, some Olympic athletes right now just say they can't take it anymore. And this is after being stuck in quarantine hotels while at the 2022 Winter Olympics. Take a look at this photo. This is from one Russian athlete tweeting, uh, saying she called this an inedible meal. And it looks like it. Uh, it is edible, though. I just thought I put that out there. But she says she's lost so much weight eating that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for five days in that isolation period. The athletes say the quarantine conditions are just unreasonable. And the International Olympic Committee says it is dealing with the athletes' concerns at this time. Well, the countdown is on. At 8 o'clock this morning, the 94th Oscar nominations will be revealed. Tracy Ellis Ross and Leslie Jordan will help announce the nominees. Dune, Belfast, and The Power of the Dog are among the top favorites this year. The pandemic, well, it's delayed the ceremony once again, and it's going to happen March 27th, which is about two months later than usual. Despite prices hitting a new peak this year, Super Bowl commercials are officially sold out. Reports show multiple companies paid $7 million for a 30-second spot during the big game. Now, back in 2021, just a year ago, a 30-second ad would run you about $5 million. Now, tonight at 8 o'clock, CBS is going to be hosting a special called Super Bowl Greatest Commercials, and it's a countdown of the all-time classics. I've got a feeling... My girl Betty is going to be in there. She is so <laughs> adorable. And who doesn't love that? And that the uh, the mean Joe Green one so, where he tosses so his yeah. shirt to that little boy. Uh, oh. I mean, those are just classic. Mean Joe Green was uh, a little before our time. It was in my time. How about that? It is, but we've seen it, though. <laughs> I know, I know it, Mean yeah. Joe Green well, but that commercial... 
That's yeah. awesome. This morning, civil rights leaders are urging the NFL to replace a long-standing policy requiring teams to consider minority candidates for job openings. That advice coming from President and CEO of the National Urban League, Mark Morial, and the Reverend Al Sharpton. They met with NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell yesterday. Those leaders want the commissioner to replace the so-called Rooney Rule. Over the weekend, Goodell released a memo saying the number of black coaches in the NFL is, quote, unacceptable. All of this comes after fired Miami Dolphins coach Brian Flores accused the NFL of racial discrimination in hiring. 617 this morning, CBS 46 is celebrating black history. And just 15 minutes south of downtown Atlanta, you'll find more than 100 acres of land known to be the oldest African-American burial ground in the city. Our Brooks Baptiste is joining us in studio with a story behind the cemetery. And that cemetery, Brooks, was actually started by former slaves. Yeah, guys, this happens to be the final resting place for more than 70,000 African-Americans. I'm talking about Southview Cemetery, and maybe you've heard of it. It contains a who's who of black history and culture here in Atlanta. And I've got to say this, you've got names like this. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., his family rests in peace there, along with civil rights icon Congressman John Lewis and even legendary baseball great Hank Aaron. The cemetery was first opened back in 1886, and it was opened by six black Atlanta businessmen who wanted a dignified place where blacks could be buried. Winifred Watts Hemphill happens to be one of the descendants of one of the founders, and she runs Southview. She calls it a repository of history and has seen how it can really spark some joy and memories for a lot of families. I walked with them to visit all of those headstones and they began giving the oral history of their family. This was your Aunt Bebe and she loved to hold you on her lap and this was your grandmother and she, you know, information about each one to the kids that were there. And it made me really strike home and understand how important the cemetery is to generations following to remember their ancestors. Yeah, it definitely is. So tonight at 5 o'clock on CBS 46, our very own Tracy Hutchins is going to be exploring why Southview Cemetery has been so instrumental in the life of a popular filmmaker, and she'll even show us their connection to Atlanta. Guys, I've never been out there, but I have got to get out there, take a walk through. I just know it's full of history. Yeah, walking history right there. Yeah. I mean, I think it's well worth a visit for sure. I want to take my girls, so. Just to feel close to some of these icons, you know, yeah. that, right. that have passed, you mm -hmm. get that feeling when you walk in a place like that. Very interesting, Brooks, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for watching CBS 46 News. Watch us live wherever you are, our mobile and our streaming news app. You can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.